Hello YouTube, Sam here from youtube.com slash onlivegamer for the new Boston and in this tutorial we're going to continue working on my favorites. So uh, before we get started I just want to give full credit to the authors of Beginning Microsoft Visual Basic 2008 um, by Theron Willis and Brian Newsom, uh, published by ROX um, because I don't want to take credit for this. They made this program. I'm just using it as a teaching tool so that you guys can learn um, about programming and how to and a lot about object oriented programming is which is what we're focusing on uh, in these tutorials so let's come over here to favorites viewer YouTube and we'll add a class so if you don't know where we are right now or what we're doing then you may want to move back to the start of this series so we'll just call this class web favorite go ahead and click add so here is our class web favorite now we want to be able to dispose of um, items in web favorite and we want to be able to use the using keyword so that we can conserve resources and memory so in order for us to be able to dispose um, and use the using keyword we need to implement i disposable so when you press when when you press enter after typing implements i disposable you can see it adds this region for you and that has a whole bunch of stuff and you don't really have to know what that does you just have to know it'll allow us to um, dispose of objects that we create from this class so now let's go ahead and below the i disposable support inside of our web favorite class let's create some public variables so we'll make a name so public name as string and then we'll do public URL as string so the name is going to be the name of the favorite um, the name of the website and the URL is going to be the URL of the website so let's go ahead and create a method and we'll call it load and this is going to take a an argument so the argument is going to be file name as a string so in order for us to be able to open and read files and write to files um, that we're going to use with file name, we're going to have to import system.io. So imports system.io. So now we can open files and write to them and read them and so on. So now we need to make some variables that we can use um, in this method. So we'll have string data as string and what this is going to do is string data is going to hold the contents of our favorites file now the your computer has a file in it for Internet Explorer and it stores all of your favorites for you well it doesn't store all of your favorites let me rephrase that it's got a folder that still stores all of your favorites um, and these are stored in different files each so the string data is going to hold the strings that are in those files that contain your favorites. And then we're going to do, we're going to create a, an array of string. So string lines as string. Now the favorites files that you have on your computer, they are split up into different lines. Let me just go ahead and find one for you so you guys can see um, what they look like. Well, uh, it looks like I couldn't I can't find a way to open the text of these uh, files right here without creating a whole new application that will read all the text but basically what um, is in these URL files these internet shortcuts is it has the base URL and then um, and this is all separated on different lines it has the base URL has the URL the icon file the icon index and other stuff that has information about the URL of the website. So we'll go ahead and close out of that. So the string lines array is going to hold each of the lines in this text file that we're going to load. It's not really a text file, but we're, we're reading the text from a favorite. So let's go ahead and we will start adding some more. So we're going to need a variable called string line. So string line we're going to be using string line in a uh, for each loop to go through each of the lines in string lines array 
So now that we have some variables initialized, we're going to declare object file info as a new file info and then file name. So what we've done is we've created an object. Um, it's called object file info and it's a type file info. And it says provides instance methods for this creation, copying, deleting, moving, and opening of files. So file info just gives us a whole bunch of stuff that we can use with files. And we're going to get the file info for the file name, which is passed to this method right here. So now what we want to do is set name equal to object file info dot name dot substring. So we're getting a substring of our file. Now name is going to be the name of the website. So this is going to take some arguments. We're going to have our start index, which is zero. And for our length, we're going to do object file info dot name dot length minus object file info dot. And now what we need to do is get the extension for it. So we can do this by typing object file info dot extension dot length. Okay, so let me try and explain what this does. We've got our name variable, which is going to be the name of the website, and we want to get a substring of the name of the file, file name. So file info contains the info, info for file name. So we're going to use the object of that and get the name of the file, um, which is the whole file. Um, and it doesn't include any paths. So let's say we've got google.url. That's our file. So we're going to start at index 0, which would be g. And we want to go to this ending index right here. So we want the length of the file name. Uh, let's say we have 10 minus the extension. So minus the length of the extension. So dot URL would be 3. So it's going to be 10 minus 3. So it's going to go from 0 to, let's say, 7. So it would just give us Google and then no extension length. So the name is just going to be set to the name of the website. So let's go down below this and add some more code. So what we're going to do is we're going to split um, all the data in this text file into different lines. So we'll do string lines, our array, and we're going to set that equal to string data, which is the um, data, uh, everything in the file. So we're opening that file and getting all the text from it, and we want to split it. So string data dot split, and the first argument is going to be an array of characters. Or we can use another overload that has an array of string. So we've got separator as string. So we need an array of strings. So we'll create a new string array. And inside of these curly braces, we want to tell it um, where to split the items. So it's got an array. And the first item is going to read the full line. And then once it hits an end line, um, we wanted to create a new item in that. So we'll type control characters, control chars. It says, the control characters module contains constants used as control characters. So we want to use CRLF. Now CRLF stands for carriage return. And let's see what else stands for carriage return and line feed. So basically, when there's a new line, uh, we want to um, split it, split that. So the first item in our array is going to be the first line um, in the string data. The second item in the array is going to be the second line. So whenever there's a new line, it's going to create a new um, object in that array. So for our options, what we want to do is just remove any uh, duplicates. So we'll do string split options dot remove empty entries so if any empty I mean if any entries go into our array that are empty it's just going to go ahead and remove those for us